friends, this is Lara, aka Lulu Sketches. Today I'm going to be talking about my art journey and how I got into the animation industry, my first job in animation, and how I got a job at Disney. In case you're new to my channel, I am an artist at Disney Animation on Tangled the Series. I actually tried to film this video last weekend, but my anxiety had other plans for us. I was trying to film it and my anxiety was just going insane, so I decided just to put the camera away and try again another day. I still get nervous every time I have to talk to the camera. If you guys want me to do a video on my anxiety disorder and my journey with anxiety, just let me know in the comments below. Where was I? So let's get right into my art journey. I am from a small town in the boonies of Southern Virginia. I always wanted to be an artist. I started drawing as soon as I could hold a pencil. In kindergarten, when our teacher asked us what we wanted to be when we grew up, we all had to write down on a piece of paper what we wanted to be. And all the kids were writing like astronaut and fireman and I wrote artist. So I knew at a very young age exactly what I was gonna do and I never considered any other career. So I grew up drawing absolutely all the time. Some of my earliest drawings that I still have are of Zelda. So I think Ocarina of Time coming out was like very encouraging. I was like, oh, I really wanna draw just like this. Maybe I can design characters for video games. This was in elementary school. I was always drawing all over my worksheets and my notes at school. Around 11 years old, I started playing Neopets, which was an online game. All these like Neopets species, different kinds of pets you could have for my Neopets. I drew their designs all the time. I would draw them in their animal form and then also in their human form. I was always creating these intricate backstories for them. So even at 11, I was very into storytelling and creating characters. I was also meeting other artists online. I made websites for my Neopets. They were called Pet Pages on Neopets. I actually taught myself HTML and CSS coding this way. I would write out my Neopets backstories and I would put artwork for their likes and dislikes and create personalities for them. A lot of artists online were putting digital art of their Neopets online and so I really wanted to try that. So I started drawing digitally with my right-handed mouse on my old Windows computer with the paint program. Do you guys remember that program? So even though I'm left-handed and I was trying to draw with my right hand with a mouse, it was a very slow process. It was worth it to me. I really enjoyed making digital art. My first digital drawing, it was of one of my Neopets and I don't have it anymore because I'm pretty sure it's saved on a mother floppy disk. I then discovered Okaki Central and DeviantArt and I became obsessed with drawing digitally with layers and brushes on Okaki Central and then posting the finished drawings on my DeviantArt. Again, I was making friends with other artists online, which was really cool for me because none of my friends in real life made art. At some point, I got fed up with drawing with a mouse. I asked my parents for a tablet. I think for my birthday one year, they gave me a small Intuos 3 tablet. I used that tablet for like 10 years. And I still have that tablet. I'm gonna make a video on just all my digital art supplies that I've used in the past, kind of show you all my old tablets because I still have everything. So stay tuned for that and subscribe if that's something you're interested in. Then once I was in middle school, I started drawing traditionally a lot in addition to drawing digitally. I was making full page comics about me and my friends going on adventures. I started getting into anime and manga around this time and I was trying to draw anime and manga. I thought I could be an anime artist professionally, as one does. And I got really into Miyazaki films at this time, which I am still really into. In high school, I became more self-conscious about my drawings. Other kids would be seeing me drawing cartoons on my notes and assignments, and I would be self-conscious about it. I mean, I was a teenager still drawing cartoons. I also wanted to be cool and fit in, and I wanted boys to like me. I remember I had some of my friends over for a sleepover one night and I really wanted to show them Spirited Away, which is one of the best Miyazaki movies. Seeing it was just like incredible for me and life changing and I knew it would be the same for them and they'd suddenly love animation too. And so I turned on Spirited Away 
and my friends thought it was weird and dumb and they kept making fun of it until I finally just turned it off. It just made me feel like really embarrassed about liking cartoons and drawing cartoons and I stopped drawing digitally for all of high school. I still knew I wanted to be an artist and I knew I'd need an art portfolio for applying to colleges, so I started doing things I didn't like as much, like oil painting and acrylic painting on canvas. Plus, I had zero time. I was doing cross country team, track team, swim team, dance, and piano lessons. And I was just super busy with classes in high school. I was one of those all A students, zero absences, and I was an absolute perfectionist. I took every AP course. My favorite courses were AP Calculus and AP Chemistry. I took an art class in high school, but it wasn't a good class and I didn't enjoy it or learn anything, so I dropped it so I could fit in more AP courses. The reason I was trying so hard in high school is that since I was a little kid, I always wanted to go to the University of Virginia. And it's really hard to get into there. The acceptance rate is really small. It's an elite public ivy. I wanted to go to UVA for the well-rounded liberal arts education, meet other overachieving kids, but also major in art. Senior year, I also considered art schools. I visited SCAD in Savannah, Georgia, but they didn't really care about grades, and it just felt like a huge waste of all the work I'd put in in high school, so I decided not to apply to art schools. At this point, I had never heard of CalArts, I'd never heard of Art Center, I didn't know anything about the animation industry, all I knew was that I wanted to be an artist. I was accepted early into UVA, which is still one of the best days of my life, and I had an amazing time in college. My favorite classes were economics and physics, and I was a physics tutor. The art classes at UVA were very foundational. The drawing classes were just three hours of still life drawing of a bowl of fruit or a skeleton, and you would just go in there twice a week for three hours and draw an object. I signed up to take a gouache painting class, which I was really excited about, and then I realized it was an abstract painting class. So we weren't allowed to paint anything into our paintings that would look like a figure, because then it wasn't abstract. I made some of the most bullshit paintings in that class. I enjoyed art classes more once I started taking figure drawing. There were two figure drawing classes offered at UVA, but once I completed them, I had other classes replace those time slots. So if I ever finished my new class early, I would actually sneak back into the figure drawing room with my sketchbook to get some more time in. I finally started bringing my love of cartoons back with figure drawing. I started drawing the models as my own characters, so this was about halfway through college. I got my old tablet out and I started drawing digitally again. And also around this time, I decided to make a Tumblr and start posting my work online again. Outside of classes, in any free time I had, I just worked on my digital art. I started building a portfolio and I figured that I could work in video games. Then when I was on Tumblr, I discovered that there were other artists like me who were creating stories and then designing characters and environments for these stories. And I was like, that's exactly what I do. And then I discovered that you could get a job doing this in animation and it was called visual development. I was blown away. I thought that the only people working in animation were 3D modelers and 3D animators. I never considered the fact that there were people that designed those characters and designed the environments first. Working in animation became my new goal, but by this time it was my last year in college. It was too late to apply to internships at these animation studios, so I was kind of out of luck. Also, I double majored in art and French at UVA, and I had applied to become an English teacher at a French high school, so I knew that I was already moving to France for a year after I graduated. When I was living in France, I used all of my free time to work on my art portfolio. I was painting and drawing like all night. I challenged myself to make my portfolio better by doing challenges like sketch dailies, the environment drawing challenge, character design challenges, and all 31 days of Inktober. I joined Twitter around this time, and I think I made an Instagram around this time and started posting my art. So within a few months, I had a full portfolio of several visual development projects, and i have been living in France for almost a year. And then I heard about the Nick Artist Program. Since I had graduated, 
graduated college, internships weren't an option for me, but the Nick Artist program was something that I actually could apply to. So I heard about it about a month before the application was due, and so I decided to create a whole new project for my portfolio. And I worked on it constantly and had no social life, and then I applied. Over the next few months, I made it through the Nick Artist program's rounds of cuts, um, phone interviews, Skype interviews, and I was one of the finalists for the general artist track. I flew out to Los Angeles for several days of intense in-person interviews. The interviews were basically speed interviews with groups of Nick employees who volunteered to be judges. And you had 10 minutes to sell yourself to them. There were maybe 10 judges in each round, and I think I had five rounds of interviews over two days. You're being judged on your personality and your portfolio. So it was very stressful for me, especially having an anxiety disorder. But the judges were always super nice and they always seemed to really like me and my artwork. Butch Hartman was actually in on my first interview. He is the creator of Fairly Odd Parent. He really loved my environment paintings and was like, you should be working in animation already. So that was just super cool. So I flew back to Virginia feeling really good about my interviews. I tried really hard not to get my hopes up, but everyone in the interviews had really loved my art and they seemed to like me a lot, so it was really hard to not get my hopes up. After a couple long weeks, the Nick Artist program called me and they told me that I was not chosen for the program. I asked them why and I was just told that I received low scores. I still don't know what the scoring system was, but I know it was based on personality and my artwork, so both were very personal. I just felt so rejected. So after I cried for literally two days, I decided that nobody else gets to decide whether I'm good enough. Nothing can stop my drive and my work ethic. So over the next couple months, out of frustration, I produced some of the best paintings that I've ever made. I also planned my move to LA. So I bought a plane ticket to visit LA with my mom so we could look at apartments and decide where I was gonna live. Then a lot of things happened at once. I got an email from Mike Doherty, who was an art director on Pig Goat Banana Cricket, which is a show at Nickelodeon. The Nick Artist Program had begun a couple of months ago, and he was wondering why I wasn't there. He said him and the other artists had given me super high scores. He wanted to just hire me on Pig Goat Banana Cricket at Nickelodeon. I was already coming to LA the next week to look at apartments, so I went ahead and scheduled an interview with Nickelodeon for a background position on Pig Goat Banana Cricket. Then, something else happened. I had randomly seen a position posted on Twitter for a visual development artist at DreamWorks, so I applied to that position. I got an email from DreamWorks scheduling an interview for the position. I flipped out. In the two months before this, I had felt so rejected and like I had missed out on my chance and that I was never gonna get a job in animation. And then suddenly I have these two offers at once. So I scheduled both interviews for the following week when I was going to be in LA. I interviewed at both companies and ultimately I chose Nickelodeon. DreamWorks is amazing and I met some really cool people at the interview and I'll still probably work there sometime in the future if they'll have me. But the viz dev job I interviewed for just wasn't my passion. It was all about drawing turnarounds of isometric views of interiors. I worked at Nickelodeon for nine months on Pig Goat Banana Cricket. I shared an office with three other female background painters. It was super fun sharing an office with these ladies. Around this time, I started YouTubing to try to keep up with the questions I was getting on Tumblr, and also I was having a lot of trouble with my anxiety, and I thought that would be a good way to try to deal with it. My first video was a Q&A, and during that video, I talked about how much I love Tangled, and I also gave a list of recommendations for artists to follow on Tumblr. One of those artists that I recommended was Bobby Pontius. We followed each other on Tumblr before and he's super, super talented. He's incredible. If you don't follow him, you should follow him. Since I mentioned him in my video, he friended me on Facebook and we became online buds. He knew I already had a full-time job doing background painting at Nickelodeon. He also had seen my video 
where I talked about how much I love Tangled, and they were looking for a background painter on Tangled the series, so Bobby is the one who put my name in to be considered for the position. He randomly messaged me one day saying he was working on Tangled the series, and I was like, Tangled has a TV show? And he was like, yeah, come visit the studio, you can come see the Tangled stuff, and I was like, Oh my god, I'm obsessed with Tangled. I would love to just see what you guys are working on over there. Then I went to lunch with Bobby at Tangle the Series. I had no idea that there was a job opening there at all. I just went to meet Bobby for the first time and meet a bunch of the crew and see all the really cool visual development and what they were working on there. Bobby introduced me to Shane Prigmore, who was one of the creators of Tangle the Series, he did a ton of the visual development for Tangle the Series. He's an incredible artist and it was Really an honor to meet him. And then I said goodbye, went back to Nickelodeon. And then later that day, Bobby messaged me and asked me if I'd be interested in painting backgrounds for Tangle the Series. I was like, um, yes. I had no idea that there was an opening. Bobby was kind of taking me around the office, introducing me to everyone. That was kind of like my first interview, and I didn't know it was happening. When I met Shane, Bobby was like, Oh yeah, she paints really awesome backgrounds and Shane was like, that's great! And I was like, you probably haven't seen them. And then the next day I got an email from Shane and that he had seen my work. He said the creators were big fans and that I'd been on their wish list for a few weeks. And I was like, wish list? What is this? And then later that day I got an email from the line producer offering me the job to work on Tangle the Series. Then I went in for a more official interview which I talked about in my last video, Day in the Life of a Disney Artist. If you haven't seen that, I will link that down below. I talk about my whole interview process. I've been a background painter on Tangle the Series for almost three years now. I absolutely love my job. I still love Nickelodeon too. I would totally go back and work there again. I probably will sometime. Animation artists switch around a lot. So that is my art journey thus far. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos. And yes, the pin tutorial is coming. Bye!